microphone right so we have quorum? We do have quorum. Okay, excellent. Thanks everybody for coming. I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. First order of business is approval of the January 6th minutes. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Thanks, PJ. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, George. Are there any corrections or additions or changes? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, the minutes are approved. All right, we have no old business. New business, case DR22-03, request for design approval. CD, Downtown Zoning District, installation of a new fence at 209 South Gaines Street, Modern Woodman Park, City of Davenport, petitioner. Sure, I could provide the overview for this project. Thanks, Matt. If you want to skip one. So the City of Davenport owns Modern Woodman Park, and Major League Baseball is requiring that all facilities provide a secure and separate parking facility for players and coaches. So the area outlined in yellow is what the city has identified as the best location for that use. So the public entrance to the park is along Gaines Street. So this will be on the complete opposite end, just outside the outfield. And um, it's located adjacent to the merry-go-round and Ferris wheel. But the ballpark is actually at a higher grade than this parking area. So it should be tucked away nicely against the uh, facility. Uh, so here's uh, just a couple of street views. So the photo on the left was taken uh, a couple weeks ago of what the current site looks like. Um, it's currently being used for vehicle storage and storage of materials. It's more of an operational um, section of the ballpark and facility. And then the view, the picture on the right is taken from Google Streets um, from Ripley Street over by the freight house. So it's not a super visible um, portion of the stadium. So in terms of site improvements, um, the boundary is outlined in yellow there on that map. Uh, really, it's just installing new pavement and then putting a eight foot tall black chain link fence around the perimeter of it to secure the parking area. And then there'll be a sliding um, chain link gate too as well. Um, so here's just examples of, of an eight foot tall uh, black fence and then what the sliding gate will look like. Um, so the design guidelines state really with parking to try to have it in a place that's not visible to the public or along a major street and tucked away against the building. So staff feels like this is the best spot for this uh, required parking facility and are recommending approval. Are they concerned about flooding? Can you, can you answer, ask your question again? Are they concerned about flooding? Um, in that area. So it, it does flood, obviously. Um, so um, parking is not that bad of a use for floodplain areas. So in terms of cleanup, it's not really that big of a concern. Mm -hmm. um, there might be some de debris accumulation along the fence, but our, our facilities um, and, and parks departments always clean up that area uh, when it does flood. So it, it's... Um, uh, a minimal uh, concern uh, in terms of the use for that. So this basically, will the driveway be right off of Biderbeck Drive then? You just drive yeah. right into yes. it, basically? Yes. And, but it's not going to block the bike path, right? No, no it's, it, it's separate. Um, the fence would be in between the the bike path and the parking area. Is there already some chain link fence around the other part of the park. So does this just match what they there is? Have? So along the railroad right away, there's chain link fence there. And then there's some additional chain link fence. Uh, if you look at that photo on the left, just to the left, there's black chain link. So it's really matching what's currently out there. And then I believe along portions of the stadium, there's also eight foot tall chain link. So it's just kind of continuing that theme around this parking area. So just kind of as a matter of um, point in the past, we've tried to stay away from chain link fence um, just because of the, the lack of attractiveness and historic nature of chain link fence. But 
it does sort of seem like in this case that it is probably the most appropriate solution and and I appreciate that at least it's black and not yeah. not silver so it makes a big difference yeah yeah it does there actually is a little piece that is silver right now that they'd be replacing with black um, against where the Ferris wheel is. And, and they so would be using this, you said, for kind of the player parking? Yeah, player and coach parking. Okay. So will there, I mean, this might not be a relevant question to the fencing, but will there end up being like a like security back there? Or so it will be, um, it will be a, a like a, like a digital access where they have like a card that will beep it open. Okay. Yeah, because there's a, a gate. Yep. Yeah. It's an electronic gate that that's what I was looking for. Electronic gate. <laughs> words. Technical uh, term. <laughs> so yeah, they'll, they'll use like an, it will be unmanned. All right. Anybody have any other questions, comments, concerns? No. Anybody mad on the phone? You have anything? Want to add? No, I'm good. <laughs> okay, can we entertain a motion? I move to approve. Thanks, Matt. Is there a second? Second. We got a second. Any further discussion? I comments? Yeah. I don't hear any more comments. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries. Thanks, you guys. Aye. So next on the agenda, election of chairperson. Well, I, um, I let Matt and Laura know that I am actually going to be retiring from my position on this board. Uh, I just recently sold my business, and so I'm going to be retiring from that as well. And uh, thank you, thank you. And uh, I feel it's time to step away from this. I, I don't even know how many years. PJ and I have been, I think, from, from day one, charter members of the Design Review Board. Uh, and it sure, sure has been an honor to serve and, and to get to know all of you guys. I really appreciate your attention to, to the work that we do. I do think it has helped make a little bit of a difference in the community. And, and I, um, I feel like we've really seen a big change and even the way things are presented to us these days, it, it used to be a little bit uh, uh, haphazard and I think it's become much more professional. So I, I do feel that, that that is good work that we've been able to do. And I wanna thank the staff. You guys have been great, really giving us very complete and, and uh, accurate information and have really made it easy for us to, to do what we need to do as well. So that said, guess what? You guys got to elect somebody else for chairperson. <laughs> <laughs> so does anybody want to nominate themselves or somebody else to be chair? <laughs> George, are you willing? I, I appreciate uh, you considering me, but no, not at this point. I think I need to find out, dig deeper into all the rules, regulations, and I just don't. It's really mostly about just leading the group as far as, you know, the, the, the responsibility is just, I think, you know, trying to allow everybody to have a voice that needs to and then also knowing when to gently stop them from talking <laughs> which is not always easy but uh, um, it uh, um, it's I think very rewarding to, to be in this position so all right anybody else we may have to table this until we have more people huh unless we want to nominate somebody that isn't here <laughs> Probably not that fair. <laughs> Just tell them it's their job. The next time. Yeah, it's your turn. <laughs> we could just say it, it's the automatic vice chair's position to roll into. <laughs> yeah. So what I can say, I mean, if you want to table it, I can get 
Um, I didn't think there were some descriptions on what it means to be a chair and vice chair out there. Um, but if you have any questions about what that means, um, if you were thinking you might be interested, um, just let us know and we can talk that we can even meet in person if you'd prefer and, and go over what that looks like. Um, our job is here to support whoever is chair um, and make sure that you know what you're doing. So um, we want to make sure that you're comfortable with what you're doing. Um, so if that's something that you think you might want to do, um, but aren't sure yet, um, we can we can walk you through the process. Would, would it be better until, until we have more people here or does it really matter that much? So here, here's the deal. <laughs> With Dana leaving, there's only eight people on, on the board. So you're the majority um, of people anyway. Um, so I mean, so it's just the only people that aren't here right now are Zach and Mark Mir. Um, so, and Carla, sorry, excuse me. I was going to nominate Evan, but I see that it's the election of vice chairperson is next, so I didn't know if he was sticking. Down. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to step up? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Give it some thought, Evan. I mean, yeah, it doesn't have to be decided. I mean, you you can you can table it. This is just kind of um, by bylaw when we normally bring it up, but as a board, you can table it until February if you want. This is your last meeting then. Also, it be, is. I'll be the chair of the next time. Yeah, <laughs> your de facto chair. <laughs> is it possible to like send like an email description of both positions and kind of expectations, and then you can we can kind of process it and think. And yeah, we can definitely send something out on what generally. Um, you'd be responsible for doing um, and, and what those expectations would be. Yeah. Um, and then you guys can have a, have a look at it and, and see what you feel like you're comfortable with. Is there a reason why we haven't filled Greg's spot yet? Is he, is the mayor not finding anybody or is it? I honestly haven't had a conversation with the mayor's office on it. Um, so um, I'm not a hundred percent sure um, when that will be filled. Um, I do know that overall it has been challenging across the, all the boards and commissions to find people that are able to. Um, so it's not just this board that has had issues finding people. Yeah, we've had several that have not stayed very long, too, unfortunately. Right. Maybe it's the leadership. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, it sounds like we're going to table that until the next meeting, and uh, hopefully there may be even a few more people that the mayor can find to add to the group to give you a better better option. But, um, oh, I guess we'll table the, the chair. The vice chair as well. All right. And then do we need to review the bylaws? Uh, so once again, it's kind of an annual thing to take a look at. Um, there were a couple of tweaks that we were thinking maybe um, the largest one is about um, how you can participate, whether you can do so virtually or not. Uh, Cause the bylaws do say that you need to be physically present um, that's something that we're willing to discuss, although likely it would fall to the chair to make the decision on whether someone can participate virtually or not, because it would, we don't want to, to say, oh, half of you can, and then it's first come, first serve. I don't think that's very fair. Um, so it would be kind of an, an unlimited capacity where something like that would be, um, permitted for mm -hmm. somebody. Are you referring to boards participating the, virtually? Because yes. Because I think we have, we've always allowed virtual presentations. Yeah, right? Correct. Yeah. So it would just be the board specifically. We, we do, it's part of us trying to be business friendly is allowing out of state um, developers or, or their staff to, to participate virtually. Well, this day and age, it just seems like you'd probably, it might make it a little bit easier to find members if they are allowed to be able to to participate virtually. I was going to say, especially because COVID's not over. 
either, right. you know, or if someone, you know, like I was able to participate in the last meeting virtually, which was wonderful because I didn't have a child chair, you know, and I didn't want to bring my daughter and make her sit in a chair out there and hope she didn't need me in the middle of the meeting, you right. know. Mm-hmm. So if someone would like to, you know, participate more and, you know, going on in their in their own hometown and stuff, but they just if they don't have that capacity, I think it would be ideal. I know that there's, you know, softwares that, you know, are a little more secure than, you know, like a Zoom or anything like that. Um, that we can maybe look into using to make it a little more. Um, sure. Uh, uh, I mean, I know they're open meetings, but. Right. What are some of the other committees doing? Um, so right now, so plan and zone, I can speak about that is at the chair's discretion on whether somebody can participate virtually or not. Um, and some of that's, uh, it's largely COVID related right now. Somebody's on quarantine or, or something along those lines. If somebody had an immunocompromised system and, and wants to participate in a, in a board or, or commission, um, and doesn't feel comfortable in this in this environment doing that. Mm-hmm. We want to be able to give them a platform to participate. I think that's only fair. Um, it would it would just be a matter of um, at least with that one. Some of the topics are very complicated. It's um, easier to have some of those discussions in person. So that's at the so right now we're leaving it at the chair's discretion. Although we have not updated the bylaws to fully reflect that. You know, the Tory <clears throat> mentioned the uh, phrase hometown. And I think if we allow virtual meetings, this might give us a chance to tap into some of that brain drain that might have been going on. Some very intelligent, smart people that don't live here, mm-hmm. but this is still their hometown. Let's open that up that possibility. So that would require an ordinance change. So right now, you um, anyone that participates on the design review board needs to either be a Davenport resident or own property within one of the design review board areas. Um, so, and part of that is to have that investment in the community that um, it, it is an active um, investment in, in the community for that. And the mayor is pretty adamant um, to stick to that. Maybe he can be persuaded. <laughs> would they open it up to like Scott County? That would be at the mayor's discretion on on, a, on what he'd want to. Especially because like I feel like we focus so much on the downtown Davenport area, and there's you know. I think the challenge though is. Yeah. I think the challenge though is that we tie in with you know building permits, and we tie in with plan and zone and we plan it, we tie in with, um, you know, the historic, all of the committees that really are specific to the city of Davenport governance. Yeah. So opening it up more countywide, then we're not necessarily like, tied to the, the yeah. city of Davenport governance. Yeah. So. True. I'd like to open up worldwide. <laughs> Global. <laughs> I do not want to review any more design than what we are. Yeah, it's hard enough. (laughs) Yeah, so ultimately that's a city council level decision, not um, uh, something that you as a board or we as staff can um, decide on. But if that's something that you feel like you want to have a conversation with your elected officials on, you can do so. Um, But I don't don't know how that would, um, I don't know if they're interested in that or not at this point, haven't had that conversation. If there's so many boards for the city that are missing numbers, um, can we do some sort of, you know, um, social, like just social media outreach or anything like that? So if you're interested, because I, I mean, I, I've never seen anything like that. You know, when I, I was interested, I went searching for it. Um, so I do, I know they try multiple venues to do it. Um, that's through the mayor's office. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, I don't know a hundred percent how they've advertised. I, I had seen it in the past when we were 
really, really low. Mm -hmm. um, there was a couple boards that could barely make quorum. Oh, goodness. Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're not quite in, although this board's <laughs> close to that. Mm -hmm. um, there were a couple boards that we were really, really low on quorum. Um, so they, they take it very seriously, and they also don't want to sign just anybody to a board or commission. Right. Um, they try to screen that process as well. So I don't know how many applications they receive. Mm -hmm. versus um, who is able to um, serve on them because they also need to make a work in their schedules as yeah. well. And some mm -hmm. people might not be able to make a Monday night or, or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. But if you know of anyone, we also have to worry about gender balance. That's state law. Um, so sometimes we find someone that would be really good on a border commission, but um, Unfortunately, they're the wrong gender, um, <laughs> and so they we don't have the ability to seat them on that one uh, at that time. Well, and I do also feel like, and I've said this before, that um, this board requires some, at least some knowledge, and it's really helpful to have some, you know, architectural design background or some experience in the field, so you kind of know what it's talking about, because we are the design review board, so... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, having some knowledge of historic um, preservation and some of the requirements to, you know, stay pure to, to that um, profession are important. Um, you know, just knowing the principles of design and architecture and, and being able to understand proportion and size, and especially when it comes to signage. You know, there's like our last meeting with talking about the sign and oh my gosh, it was going to be way too big for the size. And of course, you guys recognize that even before we had the meeting, thank goodness. But, you know, those are important things and, and uh, um, you don't want to put the group at a disadvantage when they're facing developers and everybody else that are, they're, are mm -hmm. in your face telling you this is the right thing when you know in your heart it probably isn't. So I think it's important to have some, some of that background as well on the board. So, call your friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're obviously always looking. There's usually at least one vacancy throughout the city, boards and commissions, if not more than that. So, I mean, if, if you know somebody, like I said, I think generally speaking, most of the boards and commissions do require you to live in Davenport. Um, some, some of them let you own property in Davenport. Um, this is one of them. Uh, it has to be within a specific area, and that, that's how we lost Derek. Is he um, he uh, was grandfathered in, and so when his term expired, he couldn't be re reappointed um, because he owned property in Davenport, but it wasn't in one of the areas. Uh, mm -hmm. So when they changed that ordinance, when they redid um, them to match the zoning code, um, he he was not able to be reappointed. And that's actually what will happen to me too, as well, because yeah. my business is in downtown, and and uh, I own the building, but we will be selling the building as well, so I will be out of the geographic area. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Was there anything else that you guys wanted us to talk about on the bylaws or anything? Is there anything else? I think that covers the majority of it. So th you can think about it. Um, it. It's not necessary to take any action on the bylaws. We did update them um, last year. Uh, so if you don't feel it's necessary, that's fine. Um, and in my conversations with legal, we're going to continue to be flexible with COVID. Um, that doesn't necessarily have to be reflected in the bylaws. So Hopefully it will be better soon. Yeah, I hope so. Okay, well, if there's no other discussion about the bylaws, there's obviously no public comment. I think we can adjourn. Thanks, everybody. It's been great. Okay. Such a pleasure to get to know some of you I've gotten to know better than others. Yeah, yeah don't be a stranger. So are you